Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to go over the Fisher indole synthesis. So this is um, the schematic for it, uh, you can get this off Wikipedia or a textbook or anything really, there's, there's lots of examples of, of making indole from uh, phenylhydrazine and some kind of ketone. I'm just going to go through the um, schematic briefly and then I'll go into the reaction mechanism. So basically you get phenylhydrazine, this is a hydrazine unit here, reacted with um, an aldehyde or ketone to get a condensation product which is a phenylhydrazone, which is this product. Phenylhydrazones usually rearrange to um, enamines, so it double bond here, so it just migrates here. And when it does this, when the enamine, enamines form, you get what's called a 3-3 sigmatropic shift, um, which gives this product, so it's now bound to the aromatic um, or the phenyl group. And then you get a condensation reaction to lose uh, ammonia and you get your indole reaction. It's quite an amazing reaction really. Uh, Fisher came up with this in uh, 1883 I think it was. Um, as you probably know from the rest of my tutorials I'm a big uh, Emil Fisher fan so um, this is a pleasure to do this one really. So here we go, I'll just drag this schematic out of the way and we'll, we'll start with the diagrams. I can drag it, there we are. Okay. So first thing to do is get our um, phenylhydrazine. So first thing to do is get a coloured pen. So this is phenylhydrazine. Now, for the first step, I'll just draw the phenyl group like that. Obviously, later on, we're going to need to um, have the aromatic ring for the shift. So I'll just draw it in the first step as a condensation reaction. This reacts with an aldehyde. I'll try and keep as true to the scheme, the original scheme that I put up, as I can. So that's a prime, that's a double prime. And what happens here is, with most organic chemis chemistry reactions, is we get condensation. So the amine there attacks this. This is protonated. I'll just miss that step out, but this initially picks up a proton. You can use the Lewis acid as well, and I've seen zinc chloride used in a lot of textbooks for this uh, reaction. So the amine attacks, this is already activated by an acid, and that sorts its charge out like that to give the first product, which is a uh, like a, an aminal or acetal, hemi-aminal species, which is just the OH there. Our prime still there, and we've got our double prime here. And now we've got the amine, which is actually charged because it had two hydrogens on there to start with. That amine there, and I will just draw the phenyl group like that for now. So the next step after that is to sort the charges out. So we'll, we'll draw this. Sorting its charge out, so you lose lose one of the um, protons. I'll just draw that in. I'll just delete that one. And I'll draw draw another one in quickly, um, so we can we can just I'll put the proton on there. That's connected to the hydrogen, and then I've changed my pen a little bit. Okay, so we're just sorting the charges out. Okay, so that will give us our neutral species here neutral species here Oops. and then we've got this aminal and we need to get rid of this because we're doing a condensation aren't we so our double prime our prime so the next thing to do for a condensation reaction is to create a good leaving group which is water uh, or just put some lone pairs, those dots are lone pairs, if you ever see me do that. I'll pick up a proton like that. Just to the next stage, which is a protonated form. So this is this is quite a long-winded way of showing you the condensation, but if you're not familiar with the condensation reaction, then I think it's always good practice to, to draw it out from first principles, really. A lot of organic chemists will just quickly condense things. Uh, we've got the R groups on there as well. 
Okay, so the next step, keeping everything acidic, because we're working with either a Lewis acid or a protic solvent, the next step is to lose that water. We do that like that. Okay, so the water comes off there to give us our intermediate that we saw earlier on, which is the phenol hydrazone. which is it's actually protonated in this species that I've, I've drawn. Oh, double prime plus. Okay, and we've lost water. Sometimes when I draw loss of a gas or something like that, I'll draw it with a little curly arrow coming off the arrow, just to indicate that the water's been left behind. So the next thing to do is obviously sort out that charge. As always, we, we've got to do it stepwise, sort out the charge so the hydrogen is lost as a proton, and we end up with our phenol hydrazone. I'll just scroll it down a little bit. Okay. So we end up with our first intermediate, which is the phenol hydrazone. NH. NH. Do we need to do that, do I? That's right. Double prime. Okay, so that's our phenyl hydrazone, which now needs to just rearrange a little bit to give us the enamine. So this is in equilibrium. It's all in equilibrium so far, to be fair, uh, because it can pick up a proton and, and water can still attack it. So this should have been done in equilibrium, but I'm just doing the forward direction really. So the next step is to pick up a proton, sorry, lose a proton from here, so I'll just draw the proton in. A proton, if you're used to my tutorials by now, is a hydrogen. A hydrogen nucleus is a proton, so if you lose it, it's usually a proton, not a hydrogen. So the next stage is to um, just basically to lose a proton and pick a proton up. I'll draw that in red there like that, so you can see. There's always protons around to pick up. So that will give us our enamine. Now I'm going to draw the benzene ring in now. And you'll probably notice in all my tutorials I'll draw benzene rings as a kekulae structure and not as a ring. Now there's a reason for that. It's just so much easier as an organic chemist to, to draw uh, reaction mechanisms if you've got uh, benzene rings like this. You can also look at the resonance forms for the benzene ring a lot easier as well. If you've got the, if you've got the uh, double bonds in there. Okay, so that's our first intermediate, the enamine. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take these double bonds off because I want to put the double bond in uh, different positions. So what I'll do is I will just, just get my selection tool a second, just delete these. That's that's why it's important to draw it as kekulae structure because it can really help you with the mechanism. So that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm just trying to make it suit my reaction mechanism, really. Obviously, this is going to be whizzing round, but for the reaction mechanism purposes, this is exactly what I want to do. So, do I put my red pen on now? So what we get now is what's called a 3-3 three, three sigmatropic shift, where that forms a double bond here, loses double bond there, that goes over there like that, and this one forms a, a single bond here. So it's a pericyclic reaction, and that there's uh, cyclic and it's concerted. So you get all the um, six electrons moving at once. It's also aromatic if you look. So we've got six electrons, just like in a benzene ring. But where the um, the nomenclature comes from for the uh, uh, three three sigmatropic shift, we write it first of all. We write it like this. Okay, so it's a 3 3 sigma tropic. Sigma tropic shift. Okay. And the, the reason we know this is because we look at this carbon frame, we look at this carbon frame, we label them up as 1, 
two, three, and this one here, one prime, two prime, three prime, okay? And we look at where the new bond is forming and where the new bond is breaking. So if we look at the new bond is forming in the one position and it's breaking in the three position. So it's this part of the molecules uh, is number three that's uh, moving. And again, in this part of the molecule, it's number three because that's where the new bond's forming. So we count where the new bond breaks from the two different parts of the molecule. So that becomes a three, three sigma tropic shift. If this part just moved um, and this this broke across here, then it'd be something like a, a one, a three one or something like that. But you don't get them. But this is a three three sigma tropic shift, and basically it just means that this this is the bit where it's breaking at the three position. And then we look at the other bit where it's forming, and it's a three position. Okay, I'll do a, another tutorial on different versions of that to make it clear. Okay, so that's a three three sigma tropic shift, and it's quite. Um, key to this whole process really that's one thing that throws a lot of students is that you get this far and then you've got this very strange uh, rearrangement going on but without it you wouldn't get uh, the products you see okay so you get this shift so the products from the 3-3 um, three, three sigma tropic shift look like this remember we've lost a double bond here now so we've still got these double bonds here so we'll leave them in there like that we've now got a double bond to that nitrogen and we've now got a connection across here with this R group we've lost that double bond and we've gained a new double bond to the nitrogen here and that nitrogen had a hydrogen on because we picked up a proton earlier so I'll just put that back on there okay and we've got the R group there so this is a this is a key step now because um, we've actually migrated parts of the molecule onto the aromatic ring and that is uh, that's a fantastic reaction really when you think about how how you could predict that that would work is, is quite amazing in itself and actually the fact that it does work is even more amazing in my opinion okay so the next bit is really another set of condensation reactions so we now need to eliminate this group here as ammonium and that, that's that's what happens in, in the reaction mechanism we do it in the lab so we know that ammonia is given off and the, the reason it happens is because this part of the molecule wants to become aromatic again it's lost that aromaticity so it regains that very very quickly now by losing that proton there puts it into that double bond forms a new double bond this double bond has to break as a consequence of that because of the the valency of uh, that carbon there and in doing so it attacks that double bond there and this is all driven by some Lewis acid or a proton around so that's the proton will coordinate to this nitrogen activating it and then woof It'll all go, you lose a proton again, so the proton's a catalyst. But you, the main thing is it's driven by the uh, thermodynamic stability of the aromatic ring. So the next part of the molecule looks like this. You've got your aromatic ring back, which is great. You've lost your hydrogen across there. Uh, I can now draw it in the shape of a, an indole. You've still got your proton on there not quite an indole yet you've got your R2 group there your R1 group there and now what you're left with is what's called an aminal or an amino acetal and I'll just draw that on there and you've picked up two protons and I'm just going to draw another proton on here because we're going to lose that in a minute to make the whole thing aromatic again so or pseudo aromatic so we know we're going to lose ammonia we're going to lose that proton it's going to form a double bond there and ammonia is going to come off once we've charged this up so we need to um, again deal with the Lewis acid or 
or the protic solvent that we're in and pick up a proton so it picks up a proton with its lone pair of electrons there to form the activated species now instead of drawing that out again I'll just quickly copy that because it's the same thing Oops. Okay, let's draw that down there. It might have been quicker for me to draw this out, I know. Just being a bit lazy, I think. Right, and if I draw um, this is activated as ammonia, you can see the ammonia unit there. And ammonia, just like water, is a fantastic leaving group. Okay, so it's if you're in a some kind of solvent that likes ammonia or, or water or anything like that then you know a polar solvent or something like that is going to it's going to love this these leaving groups okay so the next stage the final stage really is to lose that proton form double bond there lose that fantastic leaving group that we've created to give us our indole product so the indole product five-membered ring there and we can put our R groups on so that's R1 from our original ketone our double prime and our aromatic compounds all back to normal and that's the indole okay so I'll just recap briefly on the key steps to the Fischer indole, indole synthesis the reaction mechanism finished now, but the key steps are for you to remember in future. First of all, you've got condensation reaction. The first step is condensation reaction to give the hyd hydrazon, okay, this species here. This then rearranges to give you an enamine. So this rearranges to give an enamine. And this enamine, which is a bit cluttered on this diagram at the moment, but this enamine undergoes a 3-3 sigmatropic shift. That's very important. That's the bit, like I said before, that's the bit that throws a lot of people because that's something you can't really predict unless you've seen it before. So a 3-3 sigmatropic shift. Once it's done that, you can see it all clicking into place by another set of condensation reactions. You reform the aromatic part of the molecule and then you lose a fantastic leaving group in ammonia and it re reforms a double bond across there to give you your indole. So you'll have water coming out of this reaction and ammonia coming out of this reaction. So that is a Fischer indole synthesis.